Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Okami. Uh, we've shrunk down to enter the Imperial Palace, and we also got the Veil of Mist brush technique last time, which is an incredibly overpowered ability that's going to let us go deeper into the dungeon. Uh, we need to get around a very large, quick-moving broom. <laughs> Aggressive sweeping is our obstacle. And we have another blocking spider who will come down to block our progress. By the way, uh, the orbs in the corner that know how much time you have left, uh, the kanji in them is the kanji for tranquility. And we're probably going to have to use another one to get by this stamping foot and the second brood. And we are now in the final major part of the dungeon. But don't worry, there's still some really cool stuff left to come. Uh, we are actually, as you can see, the mist billowing out in the background. We're getting pretty close to the source. Uh, so we're going to have Isun grab this, and then we've seen uh, the bamboo shoot puzzle before. We're going to fill that up with clean water from the waterfall. Not sure if you can use the poison water. I don't think that works, but either way, it doesn't need to. So we have clean spring water. God, I love this perspective on the palace when you're so small. Now I'll ride this little dude up and... Another sick character silhouetted behind a screen. <laughs> Okami and Little Nightmares uh, are sure matching each other in some really uncanny ways lately. Ah, <laughs> uh, where are we gonna do about the Royal Oaf? We're still too big to fit through the mosquito net. We're gonna have to get up on the raptors using the platform spiders. And then, the, uh, the palace becomes Sen's fortress a little bit. You'll see what I mean. I was wondering if I could maybe power slash that to play it. Unfortunate. That would have been a really nifty detail. And you never know with this development team. They can get pretty absurd about the details they put in. Okay, so we are above the mosquito net now. Uh, we're just not directly over the Emperor. So we just have to work our way across the beams. And... Pendulum Spiders. <laughs> And we finally got the Imperial Palace map, so we're going to take a look at that real quick. Just see about how far in we are. Let's see if we missed anything important. You can see it's not a huge dungeon. And there's not too much going on on each floor, so... Not a whole lot to miss. Oh yeah, you can see the vortex uh, of, of poison mist whirling up over there. Whoops. Does that put me back at the beginning, or... Oh, good. Okay, so I don't think we can pass through that, so we're gonna backtrack along this way. And then back here. This is just such a cool, creative dungeon. It's full of things that are, are familiar. But the the context here just allows allows them to get creative and fun with like how they implement those things. Like the pendulum spiders and the moving platform spiders. Like yeah, it's just basic platforming and dungeon stuff, but in this cool creative new context. 
It's more about the challenge of like, how do we fit these things in while making them make sense while you're a thousand times smaller than you usually are? Well, it would be silly to have tiny, tiny actual pendulums, so... Oh yeah, there are just spiders who swing like this all day and all night forever. <laughs> now we are directly over the Emperor's mouth. It's just begging us to dive in. Hell yeah, cannonball. Just cannonball straight into his esophagus. You're one fearless wolf. This should be the fastest way to get to the root of the problem. And that would be his uvula. Oh, I know. It's that dangly thing that hangs down the back of the throat. I bet if we tickled it, the royal oaf would sneeze. It's probably our best bet for getting out of here. That's not how the uvula works, Eason. If you do that, he's not gonna sneeze, he's gonna gag. Oh, we have a convenient origin mirror here to save. And the inside of the Emperor's body is not actually, like it's not um, inside Jabu Jabu or something where it's a full dungeon or, or, or chunk of dungeon. Uh, it's really just the lead up and setting to the boss fight. But it is, it, it does make for some pretty gnarly scenery. Looks like my small intestine when I had that abscess and had to spend my birthday along with like half the week in the hospital. And we're gonna drop into the fleshy pit. That missed. It's alive, Amy. This is Blight. Under my control, this body breeds evil mist over the city. And you, Mutt, you dare attempt to clear the skies of my poison? Waging battle with me inside a human body will be no easy task. Even now, Goldnail, the mighty sword, cries out for your blood. Come, step forward so that I, the indomitable Blight, may cut you down. Yeah, Eason gets to be kind of cool. I'll step forward, all right. <laughs> You're a real piece of work, Blight. Better say your prayers. You uncultured wretch. Be warned. We are in the very bowels of the Emperor. If we fight here, his body will not... Give me a break. A little action here will help him wake up. I love that. <laughs> no regard for collateral damage will do to his inside. <laughs> Just like, no, stop. Don't even think about this. Let's just fight. Let's get on with this. My Supreme Blade Denkomaru. Ren that hunk of junk you call a sword. Yeah! <laughs> it's so cute. Like, Eason has a really cute design. So, Blight is incredibly quick. Which is foiled by the fact that we got the slow ability. Uh, and... Blight is also kind of Virgil, but with substantially more stink lines. That's one of his two main attacks, the sword drawing attack. Which, uh, back during the Bayo Let's Play, I think I would have called Laijutsu. I make fun of Call of Cthulhu for Macabre, but I've definitely had my own Macabres over the years. <laughs> uh, so when he does his Virgil summon swords, you want to power slash all of them, uh, but the main one that you want to make sure you hit is Goldnail. Because then it'll fly off his body, it'll give you a few, ch uh, 
few seconds to do damage to the sword, and then you have to get away before the Poison Nova. And then for the sword drawing attack, you just want to get around behind him when he has the sword drawn and hit that a few times to knock it away. Also, another enemy with a helmet like one of Orochi's heads, just like Crimson Helm. So Blight is fairly simple, still harder than previous bosses because he is fast and he can do a lot of damage with his limited number of attacks. And once we knock it away one more time, that should be it. Looks like he's gonna do the sword draw. Getting ready to jump that. That looked like it should have connected, but it just didn't. Okay, let's fail a miss. Get around. Oh, nope. I don't think it worked out. Ah, can't get the angle. This is the easier one to hit anyway. Uh, we're going to make sure that we finish this one off so that it doesn't hit us as we're trying to finish this off. Also, you can make really good use of the glaive in this fight. You have a lot of downtime to charge it. Oh, hell yeah, we have a new rosary type weapon. Divine Instrument Exorcism Beads. Purifying Rosary that contains the power of Holy Light. Light, a disease residing within the Emperor's body and born of the intense hatred and evil of the cursed sword Goldnail, was the source of the acrid mist that had plagued the capital's citizenry. But even a creature so despicable and full of hatred was no match for our intrepid heroes, Amaterasu and Isun. Light's defeat brought with it a lifting of the acrid fog. The Emperor, now freed of evil's influence, returned to normal. Amaterasu and the others had earned a brief moment of respite. However, evil conspired to cut the tranquil scene short. From Goldnail's defeated form rose the familiar blackness. The spirit of evil and hatred that had resided within the sword black as midnight and deep as the sea, rose slowly skyward. Make no mistake, this was undoubtedly one of the foul spirits that dispersed from Orochi's broken body. Quickly and steadily it rose. Then it shot off toward the distant sea and over the horizon. It moved with purpose, as if to a rendezvous with a lost friend. Amaterasu and the others had no time to rest. If they were truly to restore the capital to its normal routine, they still had to deal with the threat of the water dragon. This tale is far from over. Hey you! Aren't you forgetting something? I think I went a little bit Joey Wheeler there. <laughs> you aren't even in the same league as the Magnificent Eason. Yeah, I think that thing that we're forgetting is that we're still trapped inside the bowels of a sleeping emperor. Oh yeah, and Kagi is still locked up. Which we have to we have to solve the former problem before we solve the latter problem. <laughs> unless unless How about we just take control and make him unlock her cell? Why bother with waking him up to explain everything? Okay, we will. We'll watch and learn. First, I'll stir up his stomach like this, and then... Also, they should be uh, bone deep in acid, dissolving those bones. 
Anyway, we have control of the Emperor now. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Also, nobody else in the palace worry about it, please. Don't mind me. Also, I find it really funny that they actually know about germs and viruses based on that cutscene, but in this case, it actually was demonic possession that was making him sick. And now we're gonna continue moving like we're possessed by a demon. Yeah, we're we're totally well. I love that we're just weak into burning, uh, burning him around. Kinda. He's not dead. Oh, I don't hear it making the noise. Oh, he refused a doctor when he took ill. And thankfully, Kaguya's cell is not too far away. If you're here, does that mean those two are... Oh dear, it's all my fault. How shall I ever apologize? How about you start off by making me a hundred dumplings? Nah, I'm just pulling your leg. The Emperor was being controlled by a nasty stomach virus. Yeah, yeah! They know about the, the, uh, the germ theory of disease here. In Nippon. <laughs> it just so, so happens that the miasma theory of disease is also totally valid in this universe. <laughs> no time for chit-chat. We freed the Emperor from that monster uh, controlling him. But things are still a bit dicey around here. We're gonna hightail it out of this place. I suggest you do too. Yeah, there we go. There's that prisoner solidarity. <laughs> oh yeah, the uvula tickling. Yeah, it's time. What's been missing from all this? One of those victory howls. So we have a little bit left to do before we leave off for today. Uh, yeah, we'll save here. I mean, might as well. So, now that, uh, Emperor Takara is himself again. Remember a secret treasure for crossing a sea of fire? Hmm. He had troublesome dreams. I must apologize to Queen Himiko for my unforgivable blunders. Yeah, that's still a, a dangling loose end. I'm collecting demon fangs, you know. People will probably say I'm foolish to give my treasures to a wolf, but you're my lucky wolf. Yeah, how many demon fangs do- oh, only 49. That doesn't give us nearly enough for the fog pot, which is the main thing that I want. Ah, uh, that is a much better version of fast travel than the mermaid coins. Uh, we also have the thief's glove here. The golden ink pot is the other really good one. It triples your ink regeneration speed. So his wares are much more useful than Kiba's, but much more expensive as well. Oh, by the way, I didn't clock it, but I think Ro on the Discord pointed out that the first Fang Trader's name literally means Fang, uh, Kiba. 
So I think that is going to do it for today. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.